Uh, thank you everyone for coming today. Hopefully the crunching of the chips doesn't uh, get louder than my speaking today. But thank you very much for coming. We're going to be talking about uh, 3D visualization of data. We're going to go through a little bit of background on the collection of the data. And then the new product that we have is the visualization of three-dimensional EDS data. So the progress of EDS analysis historically has been just on the top surface of your sample. And it's always been the implication, if you understand what's on the top surface of your sample, that obviously you understand the material all the way through into the third dimension. But as this figure illustrates, maybe you don't quite know what's happening all the way down underneath the top surface of your sample. So that's where you really want to know what the three-dimensional structure is, because obviously the three-dimensional structure affects the real properties of the material. So you really want to understand that. Many uh, techniques are out there that do sectioning of materials. Uh, the easiest way of thinking of things are things like CAT scans, where they would section through the material with the different detectors, get different images, slice through, and then they have the uh, sectioning ability. So that's the type of um, application that we would do in the EDS uh, by sectioning through the material, going down through, getting a series of images and a stack of images. So there are a ver variety of methods to section the materials, of hard materials, we'll say, relatively hard, non-biological, mechanical polishing, there are some uh, institutes that are actually having robotics for mechanical polishing, that they uh, mechanical polish at known depths of removal of material. So they will image, analyze, grab the sample, take it out remotely, polish it, put it back in. They can accurately measure that. Focused ion beam is by far the most popular and we'll be uh, using that as an illustration. And there's also laser ablation or laser assisted uh, evaporation of the top surface to go down through. A little bit esoteric, but becoming a little bit more popular because it has uh, added benefits over the uh, uh, FIB operation. So we'll have a very short uh, presentation showing what happens in the FIB. Thanks, Pat. All right. Uh, so I'll just do the, the quick version of, uh, of, of data acquisition since that's, uh, I mean, fairly well established. Here's a quick view of uh, what the inside of your FibSem might look like, uh, nice and crowded. Um, so where the EDS detector is, uh, is kind of right back here. Um, and the EBSD detector, if you use one of those, is there. And you can do 3D in both of those. All right, so an idea with 3D is uh, you kind of have this back and forth exchange between the microscope and the EDAX software, where uh, one controls the milling, one controls the scanning of the EDS and getting that data. And then once you've gotten all your slices, then you jump out of that loop and uh, jump into the analysis process. So with the team software, uh, this is kind of the, the gist of the 3D acquisition. There, there'll be some kind of wizard or outside application for acquisition, you'll be taken into the into the team software uh, where you'll set up the scan parameters. Now, what I've shown here is EBSD since that's kind of my forte, uh, but the same applies for EDS, where you'll go in, you'll set up your scan resolution, any sort of detector parameters you need. So, in the case of EDS, your amp times, uh, maybe your your dwell time and uh, and frames that you want to scan on each level, and that's and that's the nice part is so if you've used team doing the 3D step is not a big uh, not a quantum leap. So the idea here is that uh, we can break down into two views. One's the uh, electron column and one's the fib, fib view. Uh, this is the part where if you try and think too hard about it, I just get really confused about the views you see and what you're seeing. In the end, there's a few things that are important. When you do scan, you want to make sure this shows an EBSD detector, but the same goes for EDS, where you want to make sure you do have some, uh, a gap or some trenches on the side of where you'll be actually be looking at so that your material can deposit into those areas and also so you have enough of a solid angle to get information out of your sample and not capture the edges of, of the material. Uh, so on the next uh, slide here, I'll show you uh, just a quick videos of what this looks like when you're milling. It is, kind of, again, like I said, it is kind of confusing, uh, but Pat will go here and show you the, the E-beam video. I'm not sure if anyone can tell which way this is being milled, but it is being milled and it's working, and then the FIB image as well, two, just two different angles of that. So with that said, I'll uh, turn it back over to Pat and he'll uh, give us the rest. Thank you, Travis. So as these surfaces are moving down, obviously you would stop it momentarily, 
uh, grab the data section again, collect the data, move it again, collect the data and go down through. So that would be the series section that we would go. Uh, most of the time, uh, historically, that the data was collected actually was for 3D th in EBSD. EBSD has been working on 3D data sets uh, for a number of years now. EDS has been a tag along on that. Very few studies have been pure EDS three-dimensional studies. Hopefully with uh, more uh, easily available tools that uh, we can start to expand that marketplace and look into that to do it more often. But you'll hear most of it with respect to the EBSD. So the data is accumulated as a series of slices. We want to take those slices and put them into a volume. Usually what you will do is do elemental maps. Uh, so you have to pre-select the, the elements for those maps, then take a series section of the maps. Uh, you get those maps, you can rotate, you can zoom, you can start to look through those. But really where you really want to do as a microanalyst is you want to do uh, quantification, composition quantification of those. In the same way that you do on a 2D uh, spectral imaging data set that you may circle a feature or draw a line scan or something along those lines, what you would do here is now you want to grab a volumetric particle or a feature or a cuboid or something like that, extract a spectrum out and do quantifications of individual particles within the data set in the three dimensions. So that is what we have put an emphasis on. The imaging is part of it, but also the quantification is the next one. So that's what we have with the product, the Team 3D IQ, which is for imaging and quantification. We are leveraging sister company software to be able to do the three-dimensionality. No reason for us to develop the software when they've been doing it for 10 years. So we're leveraging their technology to put our data sets into their technology and to be able to do it. So the 3D rendering, you'll be seeing some uh, graphics for that. In addition to inputting uh, elemental maps by knowing what the bitmaps are, we can actually take the full spectral imaging data set when we do that, we have the complete spectrum at each point in the material, so we can extract full spectra from that, with including all the peaks that you may or may not be interested in, and also the background, so that we can do full quantification ability on that. So it is the most comprehensive imaging quantification available for EDS analyses. So, typical way you would collect it if you're sitting at the microscope is you would see images something like this. These are five slices out of a stack of 43 slices for the total data set. So if you would sit down and look at this, you try to interpret what the size and shape of these different particles are through the volume of material. I can think pretty easily in three dimensions, so I can infer what the shape is. If you don't think in three dimensions, it's going to be pretty hard to understand what the shape is of this. So what we can do is bring all of that data, the whole spectral imaging data set, into the 3D program illustrating that each dot that you see in this illustration is one x-ray color-coded for the different elements that we've selected. If you include all the x-rays into the display, it's a little bit too much. So you want to do other methodologies, display methodologies, to reduce the data down. One way is to put an ISO concentration surface in it. You have a slider bar that selects a composition level that would slide through. You can see the surface in real time sliding through. You set it and then you can see where the individual particles are in the data set and that's what this illustration is of the same data set. So now we can see where the individual particles are. These ones are relatively equiax. These are kind of odd shaped. This is only showing the neodymium that we have in this particular case as an example. You can have multiple uh, colors and multiple elements displayed at any one time. Um, so that shows you what each one is. However, if we go to the next one, so this is the data set now that you can rotate the data and look at the data. So we have the surfaces and we also have dots for the platinum x-rays. Sometimes you put platinum as a protective surface on it. So the main thing is look at the shape of this center particle. You can see that nose sticking out of it and you can see that it's irregularly shaped, has other extraneous pieces on it. So you can sit in the software and move it all around, do all these rotations and understand the true three-dimensionality. Now that you want to understand that one particle in the center, we have with that isosurface extracted a spectrum. So this is the particle spectrum from that one particle that's inside it. This is the cumulative spectrum of every pixel within that large central green particle. 
This is the cumulative spectrum of every pixel in the data analysis, so that's the average composition, if you will. And you can see the main significant difference are these leading peaks are significantly taller in the spectrum. Those are the rare earth materials, rare earth elements, so we have the rare earth elements. We get the spectrum of the average cumulative, but also in the particle, you can see it's enhanced in the particle. So that's where the quantification comes. One, putting all the stacks together. Two, viewing it and seeing, rotating it, understanding the true three-dimensionality. Three, getting the quantification of the individual particles to get the power out of the uh, data structures. There is a very interesting additional uh, analysis that you can do. It's called a proxygram. Think of it as a cumulative line scan of all the surface normals with respect to that individual particle. So you select a particle and take a line scan of every single surface normal and add them all up. What it's really useful for is any segregation or diffusion at the interfaces, any buildup at the interfaces, because you'll add up all the statistics of all the sample normals around. So what we see is the iron going down and the rare earths going up. You don't see too much else in this particular sample, but it's a built-in feature to be able to do this, and it's over a relatively small distance. This is less than uh, a micron or so right there. Another uh, operation you can perform is to put an extraction volume within this material. This particular one happens to be a cylinder. You can vary the diameter and the length of the cylinder and then vary the orientation of that cylinder within the material. You can subset the data out or an analyze the data going through here. The usual way of doing it is with a line scan. So if we go to the next slide, now you can see a line scan go through with the iron and the uh, rare earth materials going through, and from this you can infer if there's segregation at the boundaries, tertiary, quaternary elements that would build up, or if there are profiles along that one direction for that one particle going through. So this is where the analytics are pulling back, that you're actually analyzing the data set in 3D by you selecting the extraction volume coming through out of the data set. So in summary, we do uh, microanalysis of serial sections, gives you a wealth of information. You have to be, be able to do something with it, so you do visualization to understand the geometry, but then also the composition quantifications. Just to go on, this one is a um, layered structure you can see. We have a solid surface here that happens to be oxygen rich. This one is a sulfur rich, and then we have the material in the back right here. This is a proxygram off of that. This is the oxygen profile. Interesting thing, you see the magenta curve here, but there's a green curve here that's displaced in space. So this is a proxygram from the blue going this way, and there are different rates. You can almost see like a little bit of enrichment here. So things along these lines are what, the, what we're really trying to do is do the microanalysis. Imaging are nice, pretty pictures are nice, rotating logos, flaming logos, but it's the microanalysis that really is the, the meat of the information. So the conclusion is that the Team 3D provides these unique capabilities of both imaging and the microanalysis.